Swiss banking system has a reputation of being used for tax evasion, money laundering, and other nefarious activities. And Bradley Birkenfeld, one of the biggest whistleblowers in U.S. history, exposed the UBS, which is the world's largest bank. And that would help the ultra-wealthy commit tax fraud through offshore banking. Bradley Birkenfeld details this in his book, Lucifer's Banker Uncensored, and shows how he helped the United States recover over $5 billion from that system. He also details what he believes was a special interest cover-up at the hands of the Obama administration and also key U.S. officials. To learn more about this, we've invited Bradley Birkenfeld to come speak with us. Now, folks, the reason we can get interviews like this and the reason we can break stories like this it's because of the standards at the Epoch Times and its mission to revive what journalism used to be. If you want to support our mission of truth and tradition, please consider subscribing to the Epoch Times. Now let's jump into the interview with Bradley Birkenfeld. Bradley Birkenfeld, it's great having you on Crossroads. Thank you so much for having me today. It's a pleasure. Now, of course, you were deep in this system at one point before you came out as a whistleblower. Um, what a lot of people may not realize is, is there's the you know legitimate economies. There's multi-billion-dollar companies, but there are also there's also an illegitimate global economy as well. Billions, hundreds of billions, in your case, trillions of dollars used in an underworld economy, essentially. Um, and really, becoming a whistleblower in that's probably one of the most dangerous things you could possibly deal with. The more money involved, the bigger the crimes, the bigger it gets. Um, I, I guess first off, what, did the, what was that like for you coming out and exposing this? And then I'm hoping as well you could tell us about what, what is it like in that kind of underbelly of this real elite type of crime? Well, you have to understand in Switzerland, um, offshore banking was legal. To not pay your taxes was part of their constitution, which is no longer part of it. Uh, Swiss bank secrecy is over. But you have to understand those are their laws. Just like in London, you can go out in public and drink. Switzerland has these laws for hiding money. Okay, that's just the way it was. And it, that originates back from the Third Reich under Adolf Hitler, where they would kill any person who moved money outside the country in 1933 when they came to power. The reason for that was to keep the money in the country to build the war machine for World War II that was coming. Okay. Switzerland then came up with Swiss bank secrecy that said, we will never disclose your identity to anyone, an individual, a court, a government, unless there's illegal actions. Tax evasion is not illegal under Swiss law, which has now since been changed, thanks to me. So in this world of banking, what people have to understand, again, if they've never been to Switzerland, Switzerland is a country now of about 8 million people, give or take. Uh, that's literally from the elderly person from the newborn. And it's a clean country. It's a politically safe country, economically stable country. And there's a lot of money there, a lot of corporations and so forth. So in Geneva alone, there was 130 banks when I started my whistleblowing back in 2007. Today, there's about 75. So literally 55 banks have either merged or vanished. This is a cataclysmic change. But more importantly is that what it did was it provided a cover for the CIA to hide money to pay informants. It, it also helped people hide money from business partners, from spouses, and of course the tax man. And as I said earlier, a lot of nefarious acts on top of that took place, not with every client, but some did. For instance, insider trading, bribery, extortion, um, gun smuggling, drug running, and so on and so forth. And so I think what I saw was this was a standard operating procedure where people brought large sums of money, some in cash, not just wire transfers artwork, large yachts, chalets, and, and cars, and jewelry, and so forth. But what, now, what I've done since the last book came out, I was threatened by Kevin Costner, the Hollywood actor, and Leonard Lauder, the billionaire for Estee Lauder. I'm suing them now in uh, state court in Florida because they had offshore accounts at UBS in Geneva, Switzerland. They have not once denied it, and they have, they're going to be held accountable. That's why I put them in my new book, and that's why I've sued them in uh, state court in Florida. So that just gives one example of your um, audience to understand, well, why do these rich people have to hide even more money not to pay tax? Well, you might want to ask Kevin Costner and Leonard Law to that. Um, of course, the, um, the attorney general in New York would like to go after President Trump's tax returns. 
But Leonard Lawrence is a billionaire from New York, and he had an offshore account at UBS. Why don't they ask for his tax returns? It's a simple question, right? It's a fair question. But you see, this has been partisan because Hillary Clinton was put in charge of this investigation, and she covered it up. And why do I know it's a cover-up? If you go onto my website, luciferzbanker.com, under DOJ Corruption, and in my book, Lucifer's Banker, Uncensored, you'll see a WikiLeaks cable from Julian Assange. How do I know it's accurate? Because I met with Julian Assange twice at the Ecuadorian embassy in London. And he actually handed me a copy of it as well. I had it before then, but he gave me another copy. And we discussed it at length. And in that one page WikiLeaks cable, which nobody was supposed to see, clearly states between Hillary Clinton and her counterpart in Switzerland, there must be a political solution to the UBS case. That alone proves that Hillary Clinton cheated over 350 million Americans. That's a fact. I know it because they didn't find the bank properly. She didn't get all 19,000 names. She only got 4,700 names. And she let all the directors of the bank walk away. And the bank got a deferred prosecution agreement. But the one man who brought it to their attention, the whistleblower, is the one who went to jail. Yeah, I know that was one of the big parts in that case originally was that out of all the crimes that were exposed by you, you were the one who went to jail for it because, you know, you were a whistleblower, of course, and you came out and exposed it. One of the big arguments against putting you in jail at that time was one, why are you going to jail, not all the people you just exposed, but two, what does it mean for whistleblowers in the future where they come out and expose crimes and they're the ones who get thrown in jail for it? Uh, what's your response to that? Well, that's exactly right. It, it, it's a chilling effect on whistleblowing in general. And I think anyone who ever thought about coming forward, whether they're married or they have children, they think twice about it because they're a little bit nervous. And rightly so. There might be intimidation. There might be harassment. These are basic qualities of a whistleblower that they have to confront. It's very, very, very dangerous, number one. But number two, it's an emotional stress. It's a financial stress. It's a social stress and all of these things that come together. So by coming forward in eradicating waste, fraud, and corruption in our society, whistleblowers are in essence an extension of law enforcement. Law enforcement can't do everything, whether they're corrupt or they're under budgeted or understaffed. A whistleblower will deliver all the information so that they can pursue it properly. And I think that's exactly what you've seen time and time again with whistleblowers. And under the Obama administration, he's, uh, he's actually incarcerated more whistleblowers than all presidents combined. So you can see nobody likes the, to see the truth, but the problem is that he's really not being honest with the American people. He's actually he's going against what people want. They want transparency and accountability. And what Obama did with Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton was, a, in effect, cheat over 350 million Americans, period. There's no discussion. Well, on that too, I mean, I'm sure you kind of see a different world because you were watching these accounts. You know, a lot of the individuals were possibly putting money in these banks. Yeah, you saw how a lot of that money was possibly being used. Um, and you seem to understand that a lot of this, based on your findings, a lot of it was, you know, Clinton, Hillary Clinton covering it up, as you said, Barack Obama putting whistleblowers behind bars, Hunter Biden being involved in some of this. Uh, you don't seem to be concerned about Trump, though, and I know when it comes to his tax returns, this is one of the big things people are making noise about. Have you ever seen anything? Have you ever seen anything on him regarding this? That I have, but and, and to be fair, I only want to report on things I know. Now, um, tax returns are a very de delicate subject. Why tax returns? I believe in his case, for instance, there was um, just some information that New York Times spilled out and so forth, which really goes against the grain of proper reporting. But anyways, I think what you have here with uh, the president, his, um, his taxes, most people in his level of tax status, they prepay their taxes on a quarterly basis. This is, this is common knowledge because you have to prepay what you, your estimated tax would be. I do the same. I pay it quarterly. And people say, well, why would you do that? Well, because you have to. Under IRS rules, you have certain deductions and, and, and earnings and so forth. So at least you don't get to pay it all at the end. You have to pay it quarterly. So 
quite frankly, I don't know if um, the president had anything offshore per se, but I certainly do know that when I went to the U.S. Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations to testify and give this information back in 2007, there was a Senator Obama who never attended those hearings. This is fact. But at the same time that he did not attend those hearings because he was running for president and he won in 2008, he then was accepting millions of dollars in campaign contributions from the chairman of UBS America's Robert Wolf. Now, anybody who's listening to this broadcast should say this is, this is criminal. And Barack, Barack Obama knows what he did, and it's wrong. He, he totally failed in his obligation, his constitutional obligation to attend Senate hearings, in which he was an active member, the U.S. Senate Permanent Subcommittee. But at the very same time, they're under criminal investigation. He's accepting money from them, from the chairman of UBS. Then he puts them, Robert Wolf, on two of his boards at the, at the White House. He plays golf with Robert Wolf. This is outlandish. And then he appoints Hillary Clinton to investigate UBS, and she doesn't find them properly, cheating 350 million Americans. This was the quintessential crime of the century. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden, of course, knew what they were doing, and they did it anyways to protect their constituents, period. So just, just to recap that, because this is pretty big, actually, you're saying that Barack Obama, when he was a senator, was supposed to be part of the committee that was handling these UBS cases. He did not attend those meetings, instead was making deals apparently with the head of UBS. And during when he became president, uh, appeared to have brought him into the administration to some degree, while at the same time allowing appointing Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State uh, to then handle the case, which led off this individual uh, per, well, to a pretty deep degree and also really minimized the impact of the number of people who could have been impacted by it in terms of going after corruption. Is this accurate? That's not only accurate, but I'll add to it. Not only was Hillary Clinton uh, criminally complicit, she, why would the Secretary of State be involved in an international criminal investigation? That's your first question. The second question is, when there were 19,000 accounts that I handed over to the government, why did Hillary Clinton only settle for 4,700 accounts? That's a 75% failure rate. I'm sure if you fail 75% of the time, like anyone else listening to this, you're fired. But why was that? And who picked the 4,700 accounts? We still don't know. Was it UBS? Was it Hillary Clinton putting her hand in a fishbowl? What was the criteria? Were they Republicans? We don't know. But it's very clear that three of the people I just mentioned to you Two billionaires, Kevin Costner, uh, excuse me, Leonard Lauder, a billionaire, Jack Manning, a billionaire, and a Hollywood icon, Kevin Costner, were not indicted. And they had offshore accounts because I worked, Estee Lauder was my account holder and I knew her son had an account with my boss. And I know Jack Manning because he was my account. And I worked on Kevin Costner's account at UBS. So this is where the American people should be furious that the Obama administration knowingly, actively covered up the largest tax scandal in US history to protect their donors and the people that would support them after they leave office. That's a, it's pretty big, geez. You know, th this is all included in your book as well, you said, right? It certainly is, and if someone wants, and I'll say it again, if someone would like to sue me, you can, you can find me in Malta, be my guest, but they won't sue me, why? I'm telling the truth. The reason why I did the book, again, it's important for the people to understand, this is a story that must be told because this is not only relevant to the politicians who are lying to us now, uh, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, is the fact is that the American taxpayer, the hardworking people of this country, Democrat and Republican, both sides, got cheated because they had an agenda to protect their pockets and their interests. So the few at the top get protected and the rest of the people get cheated. And that's exactly what happened. And if someone would like to debate me, I'll debate anyone, anywhere, at any time. No problem. I have the facts, I witnessed it, and I have documents to prove it. This is, this is interesting because you know, I just did a big episode on uh, policies of, uh, sorry, of uh, President Donald Trump and of Joe Biden. 
It's interesting that in Joe Biden's policies, he actually talks about going after money laundering. It's one of his main uh, tax policies, actually. What's your perception of that? Because when I read that, I was like, oh, maybe he's going out. Maybe he will go after people committing tax fraud. Do you, do you think that's legitimate or is there is there a loophole in this? What do you, what's your thought about it? Well, I, I, again, I'm, I'm fairly well versed in this area. And I think uh, that's a, a fraudulent statement by uh, Joe Biden. And the reason for it is very simple. He's been in office for over four decades and he comes from the state of Delaware. These are all facts. And the state of Delaware is a corporate tax haven. Now, Joe Biden has done nothing, repeat, nothing to cur curtail Delaware's illegal tax evasion policies. For instance, you can set up companies and, and, and bank accounts and so forth. The problem is, and don't take my word for it, go back to June 2012, New York Times article clearly states that it is a, a offshore tax haven, Delaware, with drug dealers, tax evaders, gun runners, um, um, gambling uh, mobsters, and so forth. And it's clear as day. Delaware has been doing this for years, but that's Joe's state. And Joe gives this image that he's there for the little man. No, he's there for his own pocket in his family. He's done nothing to correct offshore tax evasion in Delaware. And furthermore, he's done nothing to do it because in the UBS case that I exposed, he and Barack Obama and Hillary were holding hands. They are part of the crime because they did not correct the crime, investigate the crime. They covered up the crime. That's illegal. And that's exactly what they did. As I said, you didn't find the bank properly. You didn't get all the names of the clients. You let most of all the directors of the bank walk away and you let the bank itself get a deferred prosecution agreement. I mean, this is this is outlandish. And again, Democrats and Republicans all got cheated. All of them, everyone in this country because of this action. Go look at the WikiLeaks cable on my website. It says it clear as day. It's a political solution to the case and the facts I just stated. So I think this is something where the American people should take notice and certainly be very upset because they got cheated. Yes. Great. I guess just last question here. I mean, it's pretty explosive stuff. I guess if you were to leave our viewers with one last message, in terms of your work, in terms of what you just told us about the way these things work, I mean, a lot of this is a black box for most of us. For most people, the average voter, the idea of global tax fraud and global tax evasion and big corporations moving money and politicians being involved in it, we kind of know it happens. We know that UBS is set up that way. We know Delaware, to an extent, is set up that way. We know it happens, but the details of it, the, the picture of it, really grasping it is, is very difficult for a lot of us. What would you tell people, I guess just as a last point to get across, what do you hope they understand from all this? Well, I would say just go look at my website first just to get an idea and just sort of educate yourself a bit to understand exactly what I'm saying is supported there on the website and certainly my book. I'm, I'm not just saying to buy my book, but it's so you understand, you educate and inform. That's what I always tell people. And it's important because some of these are quite sophisticated, offshore accounts, numbered accounts, safe deposit boxes, um, um, offshore companies and trusts and so forth. This is why it's done that way, with sophisticated lawyers and accountants and trustees and so forth. But the reason why it's done is because people with that much money try to get away with it. And in the, in the Hunter Biden, Joe Biden instance that we've heard about from the other whistleblower, I know exactly what he's saying. It's clear as day what they were doing. So it's troubling because most people in this country, um, they're hardworking Americans, and they can't do the things that we just talked about here. But these folks at the highest levels of government not only rip off the system, violate their oath to the Constitution that they took when they came into office, and in the end, the rich rip off everyone else. And this is what happened here with the Obama administration. Hmm. Bradley Birkenfeld, it's been a real pleasure having you on Crossroads. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Now, that said, folks, we're broadcasting five days a week, Monday through Friday, and also on Sundays, we do a live Q&A, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to support this channel, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find the link to that in the description below. And also, if you want to support the journalism of the Epoch Times, please consider subscribing to our online or print editions. Now, that said, please tune in next time. Stay informed and stay free. Mm -hmm.